Welcome, everybody, to Survive in Advance on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. Survive in Advance is brought to you by BetDSI.eu. You can go to BetDSI, put in the promo code TGT to get a 100% cash back bonus on your first deposit up to $1,000. I am your co-host for Survive in Advance, Mike Goodpaster, and right now I'd like to welcome in my co-host. Hmm. I guess there's two of us. That's why they Luke, call us Coes. Lucas, All right. yeah. Did so, say Lucas. be quiet. Why would you give away yeah. who's going to be on the show? I've told you about this for over a year now, Stephen. Because Lucas is a co-host no, You're not now. supposed He's to say on. Lucas. All right. But 1981 national champion, Steve Bisley. Hi, Lucas. How you doing, buddy? You're not supposed to say Lucas. <laughs> Lucas will be quiet because he knows not to speak until spoken to. All right. And, of course, we have our guest today. Lucas Raptor Weiss. How you doing, Lucas? Mike, Steve, what a day it is. So happy to be on with you guys. And, yeah, it's an unbelievable moment that I witnessed last night. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I'm a Pacers fan, so it doesn't impress me that much. <laughs> okay, but wait, wait, wait. Can the I thing ask, that does impress me is this. Question. Once again, right, our main betting outlet, the Risley Report, 100%, just like always. If you pick the opposite of Risley, uh, the Risley Report, wrong. you yeah, win. I know. Yeah. Right, yeah. Go ahead. Touche. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't whoa, use touche whoa. anymore. I had, yeah, Steven's I, yeah, not allowed I got, to use touche anymore. anymore or holy cow. I'm not, holy cow. I, I can use holy cow for they a while. Can. I don't like the Cubs. I, but I can't use touche anymore. I get that. Well, so I'm, I'm it, done man. there. Go ahead. What do you have to say? Lucas, is this, in the history of the NBA, is this the coolest thing that's ever happened to the NBA? No. It's the coolest thing that's happened in Canada in a very okay. long time. I think the NBA, the, the, there's a lot of great moments. I'm not going to try to say that this one eclipses some other amazing moments like the Lakers and Celtics in the 80s, Michael Jordan in the 90s. But it's cool because for the first time ever, an NBA champion is not an American team. And that's historical in and of itself. And like I've said with you guys a previous show, this is an opportunity now to grow the game of basketball in this country even more. And I think that the success of this team is just going to do that. All right. So where does this rank among the greatest sports moments in Canadian sports history? I would say... Mike gets up there with with the Blue Jets, um, winning back to back in ninety two, ninety three. But I think the difference there is that the Blue Jays, the Montreal Expos, were were in the MLBs. It's not like the whole country was cheering for the Blue Jays. In this case, the whole country was behind the Toronto Raptors. And when you think of the depths of disappointment and heartbreak that they experienced when they founded their franchise and all through those years where I lived them, I was an original fan and they were just so disappointing and so awful. They were the, they were the laughing stock. And to come out of that and, and to rebrand this team as, you know, young and energetic and enthusiastic and having the best fans in the NBA, Jurassic Park, all that, and putting a great product on the floor that we saw this season, it's definitely up there to me in, in, in Canadian sports history. And, yeah, you, and for me, it rivals... Would you put it number two? I would put it number two. Yeah. I'm not going to... It uh, can't be number know, one. I would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think with time, Again, I'm not, I'm not someone who, who's going to be prisoner of the moment here. I think with time, this will even elevate even more. I think, you know, I'm still trying to 
you know, decompose and, you know, understand what I just witnessed last night and what I've witnessed the last two months. But I think that this is the start of something very special here in this country. And it's the start and, and, and the revolution and the boom, if you will, of basketball popularity here in Canada. Was there a boom right, Mike, in baseball Mike, 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 popularity? Mike, 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 Mike. What? Mike, can I ask a question? Yeah. I, I just got to ask Lucas this question right now because we're going to have this discussion about this. I'm going to give you two words, Lucas. Wayne Gretzky. Okay. No, Paul. Yeah, Henderson. right. Now, and you, and, and you think that you think that what Toronto did was bigger than what Wayne Gretzky did with the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, you you think that's bigger? Gretzky's not even really? had one hockey in moment in Canada, Canadian history. Yeah, he holds sixty one. He holds sixty one NHL records. What's that matter? I guess it Steve. doesn't matter. Paul Henderson. Uh, Steve, it, yeah. Paul Henderson. Steve, Steve, it matters. But I'm not going to put that up there with the Raptors, the Blue Jays. Sidney Crosby's golden goal in 2010 or Paul Henderson 1972 Summit Series. I mean, those moments, you know, the thing about Edmonton was that's just a small yeah. section of, of the country. Of course, we that's love the Boston Wayne Celtics. Gretzky. Of course, he's the that's best the Boston Celtics player. He's that's winning 11 championships player. in a row. That, 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 that's the Edmonton Oilers. The, the greatest they player have. ever to play hockey, one of the greatest teams ever to play in the sport. And you're saying that one win in a, in a seven game series, actually, well, it's six games, um, was is bigger than what Wayne Gretzky did for Canada. Well, because a moment is a moment. Wayne Gretzky okay. was a career, and I think that again, the end, you know, I think that the Raptors they captured the whole country, Steve. The Edmonton Oilers only captured a small Edmonton. section. Yeah, Alberta. Edmonton, very, very small, very small. You know, this is not Toronto or Montreal uh. or Vancouver. It's Edmonton. And I'm not trying to downplay Wayne Gretzky. I think what Wayne Gretzky did was off the charts. He's the best hockey player to ever play. But there were moments that, 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 that brought the nation together more than what Wayne Gretzky did for the Edmonton Oilers. In, in, in this day and age, in this day and age, Wayne Gretzky did see. more for Canada than, no. than, no. than yeah, Paul Henderson yeah, no. did. And, and okay, well, let me let me ask this question. Wait, I'm that's not having not. fun now. Let me How ask about this? Question. Let me ask I, this question. You, Why do you think what Wayne Gretzky did is bigger than what Paul Henderson did? Because Wayne Gretzky defined the game of hockey. He learned how to score. He, he I, I just, I, you know what? I just picked up hockey. So I'm just starting to watch it. And what Wayne Gretzky said was you had to learn to score behind the net. He changed the genre in that sport. Yeah, he, so. he changed the you know way Paul the game Henderson was did? played. No, I don't know what Paul Henderson okay. did. Please Paul tell Henderson. me what Paul Henderson did. Paul Henderson. Let me, let me, during, let me, let me ask the question I thought you wanted me to first. tell you what Paul Lucas Henderson question. did. I will in, in a second. because and Mike, you're going to know the answer to this question. So let Lucas answer. Lucas, where did Steve. Wayne Gretzky go to high school? He, in Brantford, Ontario. No, he did not. He didn't? No, he went to Carmel High School, Carmel, okay. Indiana. Yeah, for that year he played for the Racers, Steve. Uh -huh. Paul Henderson, for the Racers. Uh, one yeah. year. Paul Henderson, uh -huh. um, basically, uh, the seventy nine or 1972, the Summit Series, the midst of the Cold War, you had the big bad Russians who were winning everything. Paul Henderson, when they were, I think they were down, what? They had to win game six and seven to tie the series up. And if I yes. correct me if I'm wrong here, Lucas, but he scored the game winners in the sixth and seventh games, which kept them alive. And then the series was deadlocked with 34 seconds left. And this is a series that I've got the entire DVD set of the games. It says they had to go to Russia too. I, I think it took almost an entire month to play the seven game series. I think it was like 27 or 28 days. And Vladislav yep. Trediak who was one of the greatest goalies in history, was the Soviet goalie. 
and he basically Henderson picked up a bounce, flicked it in the net with like 30 seconds to go. And I, I would think that Paul Henderson, and it's kind of like this. We've had great American players in <sighs> hockey in the NHL, but nobody will ever come close to Micah Ruzioni. Very true. Just in terms of the cultural impact. And that's what Paul Henderson did, Steve. I think, you know, hockey was, you know, popular, obviously, in Canada. But what Paul Henderson did, it just exploded hockey. And there were people from coast to coast watching the Summit Series. Just like there were people coast to coast last night watching the Raptor. I don't think there were people coast to coast, you know, tuned into Wayne Gretzky. They no, because everybody in Calgary hated Edmonton. So Exactly. It would just be like if the Leafs won the Cup. The whole country wouldn't be tuned in if the Leafs were in the Cup or won the Cup. A lot of people would hate the Leafs winning the Cup. So everybody in L.A., everybody in L.A. hated Boston. Everybody in Boston hated L.A. That's a rivalry. That That's not to say – that's that's such an inappropriate comment to make. Huh? How is that inappropriate? How's Calgary and Calgary and Edmonton? I know both those names. Well, what do you mean? Well, how's it an inappropriate yeah. comment? Because I can tell you this. If you just go back and watch like the 86 NHL playoffs, you'll understand why Calgary and Edmonton are the way they are. Calgary and Edmonton is one of the biggest rivalries in professional sports. At least it used to be. Mm-hmm. Still is. So, so you, 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 oh, all right, go ahead. I'm just going to shut up. No, I'm just Which asking how it was an inappropriate comment that Lucas no. made. Because I'm hoping it is so we can bust his balls about it. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about the game a little bit last night. Um, the thing that surprised me here, Lucas, was they win with Danny Green not scoring a single point. And they came out at the start of the game. They played horrible. But Kyle Lowry kept him in this game and ended up tied for a game high for the Raptors at 26 points. Him and Siakam, I think, are the difference in the game, but mainly Lowry keeping them in the game at the start. Yeah, it was Kyle Lowry. Lowry and Siakam were were really fantastic. But let's give some love to Fred Van Fleet, too, off the bench in the fourth quarter. Double digits in the fourth. He was just spectacular and this is someone who Mike Steve when I was watching the Raptors this year I was saying you know this guy needs to go he was he was not performing at a high level all of a sudden his wife has a baby and he's playing off the charts and he was great in the Eastern Conference final and he was also great in the NBA final and I know that we're going to talk about this but unfortunately the, the injury bug caught up with the Warriors once again because Clay Thompson was playing at a super high level. He goes down, and to me, that's where the game shifted towards the Raptors. And I give the Raptors full credit for closing it out. The toughest game to close out is the fourth game. But, you know, when you only have Steph Curry, you you know, you know your only real shooter out there, and they could do the box and one defense, which Nick Nurse has been, has been doing, it's, you know, it would it would have been a colossal choke if the Raptors would have uh, choked away that one. So. so, let me ask you this, Steve. Do you think that, and I'll go ask Lucas the same thing, what's the biggest story here? Is the biggest story that the Raptors won the NBA championship? Or is the bigger story how they did it with Clay Thompson going down last night in the third quarter and losing Kevin Durant, um, Looney's been playing hurt. What's the bigger story here? I think the bigger story is Toronto winning the NBA championship. I think that, that, that that's a monumental effort by that basketball team. And they, they played as a great team. To me, that's a bigger story. Now, go ahead. <laughs> what? Lucas? You know, there's going to be haters and critics out there saying, well, you know, the Raptors. How can you hate, how can you hate, how can you hate the Raptors? Love it. No, there's always going to be critics, Steve. Come on, you're on Twitter. You know that. There's just people. There's trolls. There's people no, out there. I got there off of Twitter who... yesterday. I got off of Twitter yesterday after you trolled me. I quit my okay. Twitter account yesterday. Okay. Congratulations. And what I was what I was saying is that 
you know, they're, you know, the critics are just going to say this, that, you know, that this was a blessing for Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors. They got a big break the whole playoffs, especially in the finals with, with the injury bug. But I got to be honest with you, Mike, after that Milwaukee series, I said to myself, this is the Raptors to win because they have the better defensive team with Siakam, Gasol, Ibaka, the way they defend. And I love the adjustment that Nick Nurse made with the box and one on Stephen Clay. Uh, and, you know, this was a Golden State team that had been to five straight NBA finals. They were emotionally drained. They were also physically drained. And I think that the Raptors caught them at a real opportune time. And they were the better team. And we said that, you, you guys said that on the show yesterday, that, that the better team is going to win. And the Raptors did. And I just think that, you know, this could have been over a lot quicker than six games. And that just, to me, is credit to the Raptors. And, and I'm not taking any lane away. Golden State had a great run. And they're still going to be relevant. And what happened to Katie and Clay Thompson is, is horrible. You know, you know, you don't wish that on anyone. Yeah, but, but it happens. It's part of sports that he's still got to win. But it happens. And it, it, it's yeah. happened in the history of sports. It's happened repeatedly because of people get hurt. It's part of it. You still got to go out and win the game. I think the bigger story is probably the two of them going down. But the reasons it's a, it's a bigger story is it's probably two of the best players in the NBA, and they may not even play next year now. That's the only reason I think it's a bigger story. I don't think it's a bigger story because the Raptors don't deserve this, because they do, because they won the game on the court. And I can tell you this, though, Lucas. I was cheering for the Raptors through this series, but after Clay went down and that team kept hanging in, if they'd have went to a Game 7, I'd have had a hard time cheering against the Warriors except for the fact that I had money on the Raptors. <laughs> eh. Because you, I, you, I, I think I this, mean, there, there's very few times over the last 20 years where I've seen a team that overcame this much and they played hard. And you got to give it to them. Yeah, That's they did. why they are such a great team. And Steve, very you there? True. Where the hell did Risley go? It says he's on here. I'm here. <laughs> Oh, there he is. But go ahead. Go ahead, Lucas. But, I mean, just talk about that a little bit because the amount of heart that team showed, I think the way they played there takes away any question of the greatness of that team or organization. Oh. Well, I think the the only thing that's going to be questioned about that organization is their medical staff. Yeah. Especially the way handling Kevin Durant and maybe even Clay Thompson. You, you, know, you don't know, and, and I'm not going to speculate here, you know, when I don't know. But, you know, this this is a world-class organization, and, and for this decade, they've been the dynasty of the decade in the NBA. Five straight finals, winning three of – you know, three championships in five years. And, you know, Clay Thompson last night, what a warrior he was. He comes back on a torn ACL to shoot two free throws. He then leaves the game and tells Steve Kerr, I'm only going to be out for a bit, but you're going to put me back in, knowing that, you know, the chances of that are very low. That's just our, you know, the heart of a true warrior. That's no coward. That's someone who's going out there laying it all on the line. And, you know, I give, you know, it may not have been the right decision, but I give Kevin Durant credit too. Yeah. And because, you know, he showed a lot of character as well. I didn't, you know, I already knew he had character, but he showed it and, and gained a lot of respect. Well, how about this? Draymond Green also, Lucas. Draymond Green had a triple-double. He had 19 rebounds. The rest of the Golden State Warriors had a total of 23. Yeah. No, Draymond played hard, and, and Draymond played hard knowing that one technical foul, he's not playing in Game 7. So he was on his best behavior, and he really, you know, was, was trying to put his team to win. And the crazy thing about last night, Mike, is that Steph Curry had a shot. He had, you know, he, 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 you know, he, he had that shot at going to a Game 7. It may have been off balance, but, you know, it just shows you how close it was. And give credit, credit to the Raptors for closing it out on, on the court. Yeah, and when we look at this Warriors team, Steve, does that mean this dynasty is dead? 
Well, that's the $10 question, isn't it? Because how many of them are going to? Because I already read today that KD is looking at a Supermax contract with the Knicks. Uh, he, he's probably going to leave. It's going to be Curry. Um, how fast can Clay Thompson recover? Um, does this team fall apart? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I, I think this, my take on this, Lucas, is this. They're not going to be in sh- in a position to win a championship next year. But I think two years. I don't think the dynasty's dead. I think two years from now, no. they're going to be right back as one of the best teams because I think they will keep Clay Thompson. He may not be able to play this next year, but he'll be able to play the year after. And Clay Thompson and Steph Curry in the backcourt together is still mm-hmm. the best backcourt in the NBA. Yeah, agreed for sure. Okay, so Mike, 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 Lucas, what are the Lakers going to do? I mean, okay, and, and, and the Lakers are a metaphor for um, the West Coast. And everybody's going to step up to their game, and people have money. And what are the, are the Lakers going to spend the money and say, you know what, we're going to knock the Warriors off, off the pedestal? Go ahead, Lucas. Uh, well, you know, they need some, they need some players to surround LeBron. The big question is, do players want to go play for LeBron or play for a, a circus of an organization that the Lakers have exuded themselves the last uh, this past year? I know I read in a report yesterday that they were offering Lonzo Ingram and a fourth round pick for Anthony Davis. Now the Pelicans want Kyle Kuzma in that deal. So I mean, the Lakers have all the leverage here. They have all the pieces to make a big trade, it's just if they're willing to do it or not. I think Anthony Davis is worth trading those guys away because, you know, you don't know how long LeBron's going to have to be, you know, playing at a relevant, you know, high-performing level. And I think Anthony Davis is a real great player. So, but the million-dollar question is, can they, bring, you know, are players going to want to go play for LeBron in that circus of an organization? I actually think the Clippers well, are positioned in a oh, better I, I position I think this, right now. if I had right. to pick an NBA champion uh-huh. next year, right now, without knowing anything is going to happen, I'd take the Clippers. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Because Kawhi Leonard, yeah, I, agree. I mean, if he leaves, the likely choice is, is the Clippers. Yeah. Now, I'm not hoping that. I hope he stays in Toronto, but you know, you don't know about these things. But – if he goes, the Clippers is probably the top choice for him. And, you know, out of him there and with all their pieces, they already have Doc Rivers as head coach. They have what it takes to win it all. Yeah, that's a team that won two games in the first round against Golden State. Yeah. It was a healthy Golden State. <clears throat> well, Golden State was okay. awful this year at Oracle. But I got, I got a couple questions for you guys. So yep. You guys are the geniuses. Number one. I, I, and this is not this is a statement. I want to celebrate Toronto winning. We, and we're getting away from talking about what Toronto accomplished. And I think we need to all, and Lucas, we are so happy for you in, in Canada and everything. It, that was fun to watch. I, I had not watched oh. NBA basketball in Rizzo so long. Rizzo was cheering for the Warriors, though, so don't let I was, me fool you. Yeah, well, I was because I live in California. So, yeah, well, I was. Matter. But I well, you always kind of root. You root for the Pacers. You root for the Bungles. Well, I don't know that there's a team named the Bungles, but I grew up here, and yeah, I cheer for the teams. You grew up in Indianapolis, so my guess is now this year you will probably start cheering for the Rams or the Chargers, correct? No, I'm rooting for the Clippers. Okay. I don't but know how here, Here's my second part. Well, 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 we well, 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 here's the second part of my question. Is LeBron James relevant anymore in the NBA? Yeah. So this is what's fun about this show. We go off on tangents. We kind of just go. Yes. We, we we get we get we get off on tangents. Yeah, he's so relevant. He's still LeBron one of the. If, if, he might still anymore. be the best player in the NBA when he's healthy, Steve. Is so he? Yeah, he's okay. relevant. All right. The All problem right. is, can they All put right. enough relevant players around him to make him exactly. relevant with his team? Fine. That's a question. Yeah. Yeah, and that's an answer. Yeah, especially, <laughs> and, and Mike, especially that Kevin Durant's not there next year. 
LeBron's going to have a, a bigger spotlight on him now. Yeah. Given that KD's not there and, you know, it's, you know, I still think that, you know, yeah, I mean, LeBron still has a few good years left. He just needs a team around him. He needs to focus on playing basketball. And I think when he has those pieces around him, he will. Well, how about this? If you don't get – if Leonard stays in Toronto, and yep. it doesn't really matter where KD's going to be because he's probably not going to play unless it's the very end of the season next year anyways. Who's the team to beat in the West if Leonard doesn't go to the Clippers? Well, I think if Leonard stays, the Raptors are the favorite to win the NBA title. Yeah, but who's the favorite to win the West? In the West, yeah. Ooh. <sighs> that's a I great question, Mike. Like, that's, a, that's a great question. Houston? I mean, I got to probably Houston. I don't think so. I don't think that that team's no. ever going to win a championship because I don't think James Harden and Chris Paul yeah. are tough enough to. Mm-hmm. Maybe Golden State. With, yeah, you know, just, I you mean, know, if they, they, they don't have either games. one of those guys, if they got to <laughs> play not, with the same gonna lose Clay as Thompson as well. and Kevin Durant, they're losing their two best, two of their three best players. They're losing them. Well, you could they have are not going to be back. The team to... You could have Clay back by the playoffs next year. Yeah, Clay will be back yeah. by the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And if they keep Green and Iguodala and Looney, that's still a de- that's still a good team. Um, what about mm-hmm. the Utah Jazz? Portland, how good is Portland? Utah? No, I think Portland's overrated. Yeah, Portland's, Portland's overrated. Got a really good guards. That's about it. What about the Minnesota Timberwolves? <laughs> Maybe they have a lot of talent. I know. But can the talent turn into success? That's the question. So, and in the East, you would I, have to think that Kevin Durant's career is over if he goes to the Knicks, because with the Knicks, that yeah. means that injury will be much worse than what we originally thought. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. Because the I mean, Knicks the haven't won any since nineteen seventy three. Will still be relevant. Milwaukee will still be relevant in the East, I think. Uh, Philadelphia, with the right moves, could be really good. Because you got to remember yep. this, without a freaky shot hitting out the back of the rim and going in, you don't even know if they'd have been in the finals, Lucas. Very true. You guys all picked Philadelphia. Yeah, we did because I we were right. Raptors. It was just fixed. Uh, we listened to, we well, listened to Bobby. We listened, we listened to Bobby. But the point is this. I mean, it's not like there was a big difference there. Boston could make a couple moves. I just think that there's Brooklyn. something inherently wrong in the Celtics organization, though. Well, Kyrie's going to leave, Mike. Yeah. But you can and always he's sign other people. Rumor is he's going to go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, I think the Nets are a team that could be decent. They were good this year. They yeah. were much better than what they were the year before. So. So it's going to be exciting. I mean, and, and you know, the, the NBA free agency is always – it's exciting stuff. I mean, there's always uh, headlines. And, it's exciting you know, stuff if you're in a big city where, you know, five or six teams control all the money and all the players. But Victor Oladipo yeah. will be back. That's all I got to say about that. So the Pacers will probably There you go. I, uh, well, I, I think it's big stuff because Toronto won. I, I think that, that that was the best thing that could happen to the NBA right now is Toronto winning this thing and going out and playing like they played and doing it with a team effort and having a superstar like Kawhi Leonard show up. And oh yeah, he already was a great player. But it, it, but now the drama is, do Lucas, do you keep him or not? Does he go well, or does he stay? It's all, it's all about what he decides. It's, look, I'm – it's so hard to tell because he's, you know, so, so stoic and uh, very, very robotic like. So it's very difficult to tell. But I think he's going to stick. What's the most I, amount of know, money I, the Raptors can give him? 35% of their salary cap. Yeah. Yeah. So. Supermax contract. Supermax. 200, yeah. 240, 250, 250 million dollars probably in that price range for a four or five year deal. 
that's probably that's what Anthony, uh, the guy from Pelicans, is getting Anthony offered. Anthony Davis. Um, yeah. Anthony Davis. Yeah. And that's that's the supermax contract. We did a show on this. Um, we talked about this. I think the Anthony and don't Davis. Underestimate Matthias, you're uh, I think he's going to be in the. I think he's going to be in Washington with the Wizards. So I, if I was you, I'd underestimate him. No, I no he no. I uh, give him part ownership of the team. He no. warmed up there. You watch. He Masai's going to stay in Toronto. He's not going to turn down part ownership of the Wizards. I just wish he could change no. the name back to the Bullets. Make it have the yeah. cool uniforms again. They ain't been worth a damn since they changed the uniforms. They were yeah. down. Mike, who's the best player ever to play for? Who's the best player ever to play for the Washington Bullets? Uh, Unsell or Hayes? Wes Unsell, yeah. One of the two. Either I would say Unsell. They're both yeah. pretty damn good. Elvin Hayes, yeah. Both were great players, yeah. All right. Um, when's the last time the Bullets won the NBA World Championship, Steve? Oh, was it 77 they no. won? Lucas, um, you want to give it a shot? That, Steve missed. This is final yeah. jeopardy before the show rang, wraps up. This is what we're going to do from now on. Lucas, the last time the Bullets won the NBA World Championship, what year was it? 78. You are correct. Okay, who did they, I was off by you. Who did they lose to, Steve? <laughs> Was it Rick Barry's team from San Francisco? No, the, Lucas. Who did they lose to in 1978? Oh, you're Googling Seattle it now. Seattle Supersonics. Yeah, I'm Googling okay. it now. You're a freaking and, 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 and uh, two Give me any year there. in the 70s you want. I'm not Googling that damn thing, Risley. In 1978. Who was, who, who, was, what? who was the star of Seattle's basketball team that year? The star? It's according to what you think the star is. Yeah, who was the best player? Yeah, the best player, I think Gus Williams, but you had Dennis Johnson, you had downtown Freddie Brown, Jack Sigma. I mean, that was a loaded team. They went to the finals two years in a row, and in game five right. in 1979 in Landover, Maryland, they beat the Washington Bullets to get it back because in 78 it went seven games, and at the Seattle Center Coliseum in game seven, the Bullets, led by Kevin Greavy, Wes Unsell, Bobby Dandridge, Elvin Hayes, won game seven in Seattle. And then the next year, the Bullets lost at home to Seattle in game five. Don't give me that Google shit, Rizzo. you got to come with something better. You that. are a machine. Michael Goodpastor, you are a machine. How do you know this stuff? Because I saw it. Really seriously, how do you know this stuff? Because I saw it. I saw it, Steve. All right. I saw it. 19, All right. 1977, Steve. Who won the NBA championship? 77? Yeah. Uh, I don't have any idea. Lucas. Seattle. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers? No, the Portland Trailblazers. Because if you would follow our oh, Facebook Bill page. Walton. Yeah, if you follow our Facebook yeah. page, you would see that we actually had the game on from 1977 to Western Conference Finals Game 4 where Portland swept L.A. L.A. actually had home field or home court advantage that year, but Portland still swept them. The interesting thing is in 1978, Bill Walton was healthy until Game 2 against the Seattle Supersonics in the Western Conference Final. And he tore or he messed his foot up or his knee. I don't remember which during game two of that series. Or the Blazers may have won it again that year. I don't think they would have because I think Seattle was better. But there you go. All right. How do you know this stuff? Okay, wait. I wait. can't tell you anything that happened in the last 20 years outside of last night, though. So. <laughs> Lucas, can I ask you a question? Because you're from Canada. Lucas right? has got like three yeah. minutes. We just got. To, oh, oh, we have to go. All right, never mind then. We'll make it a quick question. No, no, ask. No, no, I, I, I want to talk about the woman's the woman's the woman's soccer team. Thirteen oh, to nothing. God. Is that cool or not cool? We had we talked about this. We already talked about this. I, I know, but we, we didn't get we didn't get Lucas. He was on input on this. He was on. Oh, I was on the show. I say. You can beat an opponent that bad all you want. It's what do you think about the classic. celebrations, though? Yeah, it was a little, a little bit tacky for me. Yeah, but it's fun to dance. Yeah. So I mean, what the hell? 
If you get if you get to dance, you dance, right, Steve? Yep. Do you dance, Steve? I don't think I don't think Risley dances. What do you think? No, I, I I have not danced in thirty years. Yeah, and when he danced, what it was is he stood there, and his wife would dance around him while he kind of swayed back and forth like big white guys do. <laughs> All right, Lucas has to go. All right, guys, Lucas, any final words since your Toronto Raptors are the NBA world champions? Congratulations, Lucas. I think Lucas may have gotten cut off. Hold on. Is he gone? Uh, yeah, it says he's in. But, all right. So, wherever you are, Lucas, thanks for coming on the show today. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to wrap it up. We'll be back Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern. So, make sure you check out Bet the SI. Use Mike, the promo Mike, code Mike, can I ask you a question? Mike, what? can I ask you a question? What? Uh, on, is Lucas back? And Lucas, it doesn't show that Lucas ever left, but... We can't hear Lucas. Who won the Canadian Grand Prix? Nobody cares, Steve. All right, guys. Remember, <laughs> go to BetDSI. Put in the promo code TGT for a 100% cash back bonus on your first deposit up to $1,000. You can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts. You'll find the grueling truth. So for Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.